at home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. Awesome. Well, hey guys, sorry I've missed you for the last couple of weeks, but I had a big shout out and thanks to Daniel Hammett for stepping in. I'm here with Dr. Claire Losey this morning. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Emily. Well, um, we had a special request from a member, which we love. We would love you guys to send us feedback as often as you'd like to talk about the rental market. So Claire, you want to focus a little bit in on what's happening with rental housing in, in and around Austin for us? Absolutely. So firstly, single family rentals are the most comparable alternative to purchasing a home. And we know that amid still elevated home prices and higher mortgage rates, purchase affordability or the ability of a household, a potential buyer to attain home ownership um, to qualify for a mortgage loan and thereby become a homeowner has diminished. So as potential buyers, particularly those first-time buyers, encounter greater difficulty in being able to qualify for a mortgage loan, i.e. running into those affordability issues, we would anticipate that the demand for single-family rentals would increase. And so what we've seen in the Austin, Round Rock, Georgetown MSA is that for residential sales, and we recapped this a couple weeks ago in our May housing stats, single family townhouse, townhomes and condos, the median sales price for those properties declined about 15% year over year, while the sales of those properties was down about 4% year over year. Meanwhile, for single family rentals in the month of May, the median rent was flat on a year-over-year basis, while closed leases were up about 4% year-over-year. So this indicates that the single-family rental market is certainly outperforming the residential sales market, which again is what we would broadly anticipate right, with higher mortgage rates. In fact, the doubling of mortgage rates since March of 2022, which has really pushed buyers on the margin, again, p- particularly those first-time buyers, into the rental market or has, has kept them in the rental market. Yeah. And so when I think about rental inventory, I mean, we were already tight in that in, in, on the rental front uh, over the last few years, just as we have been in ha- all types of housing. But then you're saying that these mortgage rates are putting even further pressure on the rental market. I mean, how much do we expect that that might exacerbate both availability, but also rent rates. Sure. So the rental rate has remained the same or remained the same in May on a year over year basis. The median rent was about $2,400 a month, which essentially equates to a household earning at least about $94,000 a year. And in Austin in 2023, that's about 80% of the median family income. So when we're thinking about households who would be able to afford these single family rentals, we're really talking about households who are earning at least 80% of the median family income. So there's, we're already seeing a little bit of that strain on affordability with respect to availability. There's certainly been an uptick in listings, both new and active listings within the single family rental market, which has added to the supply of single family rentals for lease. But when we think about things over the long term, you know, how much more supply is going to be incorporated into this market over the long term. What we're really seeing is that, of course, higher mortgage rates have dampened construction activity, not only in the single family home ownership market, but also in the build for rent market. And then, you know, what do we see in terms of investors given the, you know, pr- pressure on mortgage rates as well? I mean, they, they even their rates are higher than a, than an average buyer or a first time or, or a primary home buyer. What kind of impact are we seeing on investment activity and interest overall as well? Sure. So investment activity is broadly down. Of course, investors are less inclined right now to purchase a home and convert it into a single family rental unit when they can chase better yields on, say, securitized government debt 
like a 10 year treasury bond. Um, so there's just not going to be the same sort of demand with these higher mortgage rates that we saw when mortgage rates were, you know, measuring below um, other comparable types of securities. Again, for example, 10 year treasury yields. So broadly speaking, investment activity in the single family rental market is down. Um, and we anticipate this to be a factor moving forward, right? Given that mortgage rates will remain elevated, you know, will likely decline um, a little bit over the near term, you know, probably into the low sixes range, high fives by the end of the year. But broadly speaking, you know, amidst still elevated mortgage rates, um, you know, investors are going to be more inclined to look elsewhere. So those rising mortgage rates are both impacting the demand for rentals, which is up, impacting the amount of rentals down, given investors have slowed up their investments in that type of property or that type of investment at this point. And the two are going to hit at some point, And we should expect a, a tighter rental market than we've seen. Is that fair? That's fair, certainly. And I would anticipate that as we continue to see, you know, this higher mortgage rate environment. There's there's some indication that buyers have become more accustomed, right, to this higher rate environment. But of course, there are also those potential buyers who cannot, they who just simply cannot step into the market. Affordability is too constrained for them right now to be able to even qualify for a mortgage loan. So over the the long term, what we're probably going to see is that, um, you know, demand for single family rentals will remain strong. And of course, all else equal, that's going to put upward pressure on prices, particularly when we're not seeing this commensurate activity in the construction market with respect to those build for rent units. So just continued pressure, especially too on those moderate to low income families or, or individuals looking to to find their next home. So agents keep working right. hard with folks, you know, uh, don't forget that down payment resource is a great resource in terms of trying to put folks into property. So if they feel like they can still get qualified and are interested and, and anxious to do so, down payment resource can help provide a, a pathway to programs that will help enable that for some, some homeowners or future homeowners. Um, and then, you know, work with your property management and leasing community to identify properties that might fall within the market that your client is looking for. Claire, let's talk a little bit about our week over week resale stats. How are we looking? So residential sales and leasing activity both slowed last week, which was June 19th through the 25th on a week over week basis. And this is somewhat anticipated. We have to remember that last Monday, June 19th, marked a federal holiday, Juneteenth. So again, we the decline, the week over week decline in both the residential sales and leasing activities is not surprising given that last week only had four business days. So both closed sales and leases were down about 24% on a week over week basis, while pending sales were down 6% and pending leases were down 7% on a week over week basis. And then new listings were down about 10% for residential sales and then actually up slightly about 3% for residential leases. Okay. So we should see more activity trickling through the market this week as we kind of get back to normal, so to speak. But of course, we also have to remember that this is the week before July 4th, you know, folks are on holiday, um, you know, so it's just going to be probably a slower couple of weeks. Yeah, this is always a challenge to it. it. Looking statistics week over week can be interesting and helpful, but we caution, you know, that that's not always the right. the most clear picture of market movement because right. there are dynamics like holidays and banks closing and such. So, <laughs> right, we, yes, there can be these distortions that make it seem like things are really shifting when actually, you know, it's just oh, okay, we had one less business day during the week or whatnot. Right, right. Well, one last reminder for you guys too, that if you're interested in hearing a more robust discussion on the Central Texas Housing Summit, especially in the context of kind of the mid-year point and what Claire and uh, so many uh, and a couple of other economists are looking at as we head towards the fall, feel free to join us at the 2023 Central Texas Housing Summit. 
That's going to be on Wednesday, July 26th. You can uh, purchase tickets online at abor.com. Also, please sit, keep sending in input about what you'd like to hear. So we were glad to cover the rental market today. We'll try to do that again for our property management and leasing friends and every other agent interested, but keep giving us feedback as well. Uh, Claire, thanks so much for hopping on today. Thanks so much for having me. 